Chapter 34 Cooling Down All our heated struggles must someday end. Our spiritual learning, our self-reflection, our efforts at self-improvement, all must one day bear the fruit of peaceful mind, gentle heart, and the ability to be at ease amidst all the hothead frictions of everyday life. Meditation means nothing if not taken off the cushion into the heart space of moment-to-moment -moment situations and relationships. When we talk about healing, it means little if we cannot stop in the moment, catch the flushed passions which left unchecked, destroy the fragile bonds of kindness which we seek to build in all our relations. Cooling down means stilling the running around mind, cutting through the chronic ceaseless spinning of thoughts and opinions, judgments against self and other. Even checking ourselves must one day fall away to cease, dissolving in a more quiet space where even self-control is unneeded. This does happen given enough stillness, and only that at a deep enough level of mind. In some sense, the practice here is letting go. Letting go of the need for controlling inner process, letting go of the need to exert our will on others in any way. Obvious domination and manipulation are just the most coarse expressions of this tentacle-spreading way of life. There are far more subtle expressions, of course. Even the need to help people by giving them advice that we think they need is a form of hothead control. Though paved with good intentions, nevertheless, it's just another way to hook into situations with a fixed agenda. Indeed, we often bring ourselves to a situation with some sort of floating agenda which is exactly why we cannot be cool and at ease in the moment. But this kind of free expression of cool mind is not necessarily cool in heart as well. Actually, we're not really warm at all in sensitivity, and literally conductivity, when we're mentally jammed in a round dance whirl geek of thought. True love is no less than perfect receptivity, and it is blocked the very moment we have calculation in mind. The idea that something at all should or must or needs to be done, or said, or conveyed, or whatever. In real mental stillness, not comatose, dead mind dullness, in real peaceful quiet and non-agenda-based mind being, only there can we find the real fullness of genuine service to others. Love is shallow without wisdom, and wisdom icy without love. But the true meeting place of self and other union takes place only in the sanctified space of stillness. It's the only starting place where real love as perfect acceptance and real wisdom as perfect knowing vision can be unfurled in their true intertwined state. As a unified expression, this love-wisdom coupling is a fine and refined way of being in service. It's also a development of character that we can truly deem mature. In the silent way alone, what do I find to do? Actually, I don't know. The height of the silent way is total completion, akin to samadhi in meditation. Calm abiding, being at ease, acceptance of the ways of all things, no longer termed good, bad, or indifferent. In such a state, we can see time passing, yet we sense that such passage is also an illusion. Sure, the body ages, the sun sets and rises again, the stomach growls and fatigue comes in its own time. But here, even the way of labeling is not considered a problem, though it may well feel like a tired habit. Perhaps the only desire left, when all others pass away, is simply the cool, heartfelt hope to help others move out of their own confusion and back to their own perfect being. In a creation of unending unity, with nobody but the Creator here, there, and everywhere, it's ironic in the extreme actually to the point of tears, that its very own sparks of light get so muddled. Muddled by their own conscious ways of knowing and perceiving, though at core the still center of being ever is, even for the most despairing hell-mind souls in the depths of agony, where we've all been at times. As earth provides an adequate heaven and a more than adequate hell, spoken by Ra, we can find many who live in one of these burning pits or icy cells of astral glamour mind. While the way of cooling down is also a means of serving others, such letting go surrender is also a good piece of advice for gaining release from painful torment. But surrender is not will-less, 
nor is it capitulation to our own worst fate. The essence of surrender is simply the release of fevered intention, be it low-grade or raging. Actually, this kind of drop-down is not some kind of special trick or positive thinking technique, nor is it a way of fooling ourselves out of habitual problem-making. The real quiet way of mind comes when there's a deep-level realization that mentally willed action is simply not necessary, and that its ceasing is totally free of risk. When the Buddha was approached on the road by the highwayman robber Devadetta, who later became an enlightened arhat, accosted and told to stop, the Buddha simply kept walking and replied, I have stopped. It's that simple. Do you get it? Are you stopped? The utterly cool way is not cold nor detached. It's not frozen in the tundra of emotional denial, nor is it a stranger to feeling. It's simply big feeling, a feeling-based knowing, knowing that so many ordinary things are not worth inner struggle, and thus they need not generate roiling emotion, nor whirling thought, nor even pensive reflection on the proper or best next move. In the real cooling down, there is no next move. It's already been made. Cooling down is the last move, not separate from stillness. In its expanded state, there is no willing eye, and it's no different from the Buddhist way of sunyata, emptiness, no self-nature, no separate figuring or grasping or clinging onto. Only here is found peace, and only here is found the greater will to serve, the will of pure being that knows and senses beyond all mental knowing that everything is already complete and whole and perfect. In this state of being, actually beyond all conditioned states, there's no longer even a drive to become cool or quiet or to put ourselves at ease. We just are.